The city of Dearborn is a diverse community made up of people from 80 different nations. Like so many families that now call Dearborn home, it was their grandparents or parents who made the decision to come to America to make a better life for themselves and their future families. Some of the family stories are more than a century old, and each one is unique. My grandfather was born in 1898 in what was then uh, Syria, which is now Lebanon. And as a 13-year-old boy, uh, he left uh, Syria with his 17-year-old cousin uh, in order to emigrate to the United States to avoid being taken um, really by force into fighting uh, against the Turkish Empire at the time um, by the French Foreign Legion. So as he got to the United States, uh, he quickly found out that he couldn't immigrate into here as a 13-year-old, so he had to say he was a 16-year-old. So he arrived in 1912. I always knew that because he arrived the same year the Titanic sank. And jokingly, we would ask him, why didn't you take the Titanic? And he would say, if I did, none of you would be here. Um, he eventually settled here around Dearborn and did multiple things, and inclusive of in the early prohibition time, uh, uh, being involved in bootlegging because those were jobs that they were able to run from Detroit to, to uh, Michigan City, Indiana and, and move uh, alcohol back and forth. Uh, eventually, Ford Motor Company began to hire and my grandfather went to work for Ford Motor Company um, and married and settled into a house um, on Salina Street in the South End and raised uh, four children. Uh, and then had uh, probably 12 or 14 grandchildren. I'd have to count them all up and how many great grandchildren, it just continues to expound. Um, uh, the difficulty for anyone at that time immigrating is, is th there wasn't a network of services, there wasn't uh, an immigration group. What you had to do was try to find uh, a network of people uh, that uh, could help you to navigate the system and, and you had to work. There wasn't a, there wasn't a government network to support you, you had to work. So all of them worked and they worked odd jobs and they did whatever they had to do um, to survive until he actually found his full-time job at, at, at Ford Motor Company where he eventually retired from uh, and he always was very proud of being able to work at Ford and make a living for his family so they could do better for themselves. And, and uh, I think his strong work ethic uh, created the same strong work ethic for my father and, and for my family as well. Um, I, I think that work ethic of the immigrant is so important to this country because uh, immigration has been the key to our stability and to the strength. And it still is the key to our stability and our strength. My mother comes from a very tiny country called Luxembourg. My dad uh, grew up in northeastern Poland, but my dad uh, came to this country, I think, in 1911. He was sent to this country by his mother because he was fighting with his stepfather. His father died when he was three years old. And he, he came from a large family and had, he had several older brothers. And uh, there was a big disagreement as to how the farm should be run between my dad, who was then a, a teenager, uh, let's say about 16, 17, 18, somewhere around there. During World War I, Anthony Paltorik enlisted in the U.S. Army. Then, after the war was over, he was sent to Luxembourg as part of a supply battalion. And that was where he met his wife, Catherine. And they got married in, on June 4th of 1919. And then later that summer, uh, my mother was uh, granted a, a passport to come to this country and they left Brest, France. They moved to Dearborn to uh, a house on what was then called Werner Street present-day Graham Street, which is, runs between Lanyo and Wyoming, right near Warren Avenue, not too far from Warren Avenue. And uh, back then, uh, people rode the bus or the streetcar to get to work, or they walked. Not everybody had a car, but my dad have, did have a Model T. They decided to raise their children as Americans. So even though my dad spoke Polish and he learned English and he learned to read and write English after a fashion, not terribly grammatically, but he made himself understood. And my mother could speak German, French, Luxembourg. She learned Polish and she learned English, so she could speak five languages. Anthony and his family had a chance to recognize his service to this country every year on Memorial Day. So my dad was very proud of his military service and uh, he was always, he marched in the Dearborn Memorial Day Parade. Uh, that was religious 
for him. Sima and Juliana came to this country after they had already started their family. They left behind a very simple life in Yugoslavia. They just lived farmland. It was, they had nothing. They just had farm and that's what they, that was their living. And they had horse and buggies and that's their way of life. They didn't have, there was no televisions, there was no cell phones, there was no computers. So then um, my grandpa wanted them to come to the United States. My dad didn't really want to come here because he was happy there and he was manning his farm. But then there was something, I'm not sure what, what took place, but there was some type of war starting to start in that area. And then my dad was worried that he has to go back to the army and he was a little nervous about that because he didn't want to leave his family behind. So then my grandpa um, got all the paperwork ready and have them come here to the United States. Living here was a big adjustment for this family. You know, and, and the stories I heard from my parents, I was just in shock of all the, they come here and they've, there's cars and there's stores and, you know, my mom doesn't have to make any more clothes and, you know, they can just go to the store and buy everything. And back then they couldn't do that. My mother, Gata Hamoud, she uh, immigrated here in 1974 when she was four years old. Uh, she was born initially in Lebanon, uh, in the southern villages of Lebanon. And the year before the Lebanese Civil War started in, in 75 and 76, uh, my grandfather immigrated this whole family over to Dearborn. And they actually moved to the south end of Dearborn, uh, living in some of the apartments that were down there. Uh, when they first arrived here, my grandfather struggled to find work. Uh, he actually ended up finding a job at one of the local bakeries where he earned about $50 a week. And that was kind of his pastime until he landed a job at the Big Three where he worked on the line over at GM. Um, and then from there, my family, you know, they moved over to the East End. Uh, my mother went to the Dearborn Public Schools uh, and eventually met my father uh, in 84. Uh, my father's family story is slightly different. Uh, my father, uh, born and raised in Lebanon, uh, immigrated here in 1982, uh, 1983, when he was about 23 uh, years old. He came over here with his brothers, uh, not with his parents initially, uh, and his cousins. And when he came over, uh, my father used to work construction overseas. And when he came over here, him and his brothers first found jobs at uh, local uh, uh, gas stations. And from there, he waited until he got a job as a truck driver, where he used to deliver steel for the autos. Um, and so he, you know, he immigrated here, he immigrated first to Dearborn, and that's where he met my mother, you know, after a few years. Um, and then, you know, the rest of the story kind of unfolded from there. Many immigrant families believe it's important to find a way to keep the customs from their homeland alive. Uh, in my household, my father and my mother made it a point to want to bring us up in the Arab uh, culture and within the Muslim culture. Um, my uncle happens to be an imam as well here uh, within the Dearborn community. And so we grew up in a very faithful household that stayed true to the traditions um, of the Muslim culture and the Arab culture. Uh, within the household, we spoke both languages, but primarily we spoke uh, the, la uh, the Arabic language at home. And that was my father's, my father's uh, way of trying to instill that within his children. My mother, of course, is from Istanbul, Turkey, which was a large, well, you have Turkey, and then you've got Georgia, and you've got Armenia. And my dad was from an area called Kuri. And actually, my husband's family came from that area, too, in the Caucasus area. Once in America, Edward and Francis met and decided to settle in Dearborn. And then uh, we lived in the duplex on uh, Porter Street. My grandmother lived on one side. My dad, my, myself, my mother, my siblings, we all lived there and went to Dearborn schools. And that's how my family ended up becoming Dearbornites. Dearborn's most famous residents made it possible for this family to carry on a piece of their family heritage. Uh, across the street from the Porter Street house as we know it was uh, the Twin Ponds. And Mr. Ford would come on in the afternoon from his office right there, right across from our house, and he'd walk around. And one day, I always love to tell this story, he saw my grandmother, and my grandmother was picking grape leaves. And he said, Madam, what do you do with those grape leaves? Now, he didn't say, don't pick my grape leaves. 
she said, well, we're Armenian and we make stuffed grape leaves and these are the best. So he said, oh, that's interesting. The next day, his personal gardener uh, dug up the root of one of these uh, grape leaf plants, took it across the street and planted in my grandmother's backyard. And it makes me very excited to tell you, to this day, I still make the grape leaves. My grandmother did, my mother did, my kids do. We all pick the grape leaves and they're still, they're still thriving. My parents decided to send me to finish my school education, actually. I was 18. I got married and we moved here and we tried to establish uh, our life in here. You know, my dad is, honestly, Baba, I think you're the ideal um, immigrant. And what I mean by that is, you know, he really wanted to live the American dream. He wanted us to be American. You know, just having the, the, the rights, the opportunities, the freedom to choose right. what you want to do, education, go where you want to go, enjoy life. You know, my, my parents came here young and really worked hard, but we did a lot of the things that any other American family would do. My dad made us feel as American as possible, but also wanted to make sure that, hey, don't forget where you came from. You have a one, you know, a lively, exciting um, story about where your heritage is from and embrace that and, and make it part of who you are while still establishing your American roots. And, and I don't think you can get more American than that. I mean, that's what this country was based on. And so, exactly. And I love you for that, Baba. I really do. You gave, you know, you've sacrificed so much for us and we love you for it. Yeah. My pleasure. <laughs> so that's really how I feel about it. Some parents are sure that raising their family here in America made a huge difference for their children. I'm proud of my kids like any other parent. I'm uh, very happy. Uh, they respect in this spot of earth uh, humans are being respected, I would say, most of the times. Yeah, most of the times is a good way of putting most it. Most of the times. Mm -hmm. We have our disagreements with certain things, but... Most of the times, and uh, I'm happy to be here, to be honest. Uh, if I was there, my kids wouldn't have had the opportunity to have that, that education that they have right now. Well, I was born in Liberia, West Africa, but my parents were originally from Lebanon. My father actually had moved to Liberia in, I think, the 60s or the 50s, you know, to work there. And my brothers were born there. My sister was born in Europe. And I went to an American high school. So obviously, you know, an American high school, I was planning to come here for college. I just wanted to come here and get an education and I knew that with an American education, you know, I mean, if I go back home, I'm guaranteed a job. But then in April, they told us you guys are graduating at the end of April because there was some, I think, disturbances there and they were, they were pulling out or um, all of the non-essential American citizens. And then my dad sent us to London just to wait it out, you know, I mean, but then the situation got bad and my dad had to leave. My dad decided then to come with me here, you know, I mean, to bring me to college. And my family came and I started. He took me to Massachusetts and the situation had not improved in Liberia. So they decided to stay. And um, I enrolled at Wellesley and that was four years. I guess accidental immigrant. <laughs> yeah, you know, it was never, there was never the intention to immigrate here. We came here on an assignment with, uh, with Ford Motor Company and we thought it was, whether it was two or four years, but it became five or, or so, and then we were gonna stay. And there was an active decision we had to make, which was that we would not go home. Um, so we are, we are products of the culture we were raised in. We're both in our thirties when we came here. Um, and so we, and we sound like we sound, and gonna sound this way forever. But the, um, we talked for intensely for a, a week or so about the decision to stay. And although we'd never been a family of five in England, and we'd had two of our children here in Dearborn, 
we spent a lot of time thinking through, talking about what it meant to decide to make our lives here and, and stay and apply for the green card. So that wasn't, it was easy to extend a temporary stay one more year. Uh, it was a much tougher decision to decide to um, make, uh, make the US our home. We're very happy in Dearborn, we're very happy in, with our family, we had a great circle of friends, we were active in the church, so we were made to feel very right. welcome and part of the community, but it emotionally felt like a big deal to say this is going to be our forever home. When raising a family in a new country, it helps to build relationships with your neighbours. The other thing when you move, because we are just, there was just the two of us as, as parents and three children, uh, and actually I wasn't working so that m made it obvious that I was the main um, uh, carer as well for the children but even so that means you have to very quickly, I felt, we both felt, it was important to build a network then of um, people who were really meaningful to our children because if you're the only two, two people that your children can turn to and you have an inevitable falling out then there's a real that's very hard for children to grow up in an environment where they don't you know there isn't anybody else that they can easily turn to so who else are they going to turn to is it just the parent you know the parents of their friends say school friends and so i think building building a community where the children have trust in that community not only through the parents so it's not just because they're always with you and you cannot, you always talk to these other adults, but that these adults interact with your children independently and that the children as they grow to be able to use, oh I need somebody to talk to, that they might think of these other people, either maybe other adults say through your church or another, na you know, other neighbours that they could go to or maybe a parent, a friend, you know, a friend's parents or something like that. I think those, they're really important things when you're not near near family or don't have family around and I think um, and sometimes the sort of single family unit which tends to be a more kind of western cultural thing is you're like in a little isolated bubble although I don't think that's true of most people in Dearborn a lot of Dearborn do have um, uh, you know extended family around because there is that sort of heritage within the Dearborn community. Yeah. In 1959 I left Italy by boat I came here, I was 19 years old. I left Italy with $40 in my pocket, two pair of pants, two shirts, and two underwear. When I came here in New York, believe it or not, I kissed the ground that I came to the, the most beautiful country on earth. I came here to the wonderful Dearborn. I lived on Maple Street, excuse me, Maple. So I waited about three days. I found out they were looking for a young man to work in construction. Finally, I went to this company it's called Mancinelli. It was on Park Street on West Dearborn. I said, uh, Mr. Mancinelli, yeah. I came back, I came here from Michigan, I mean, from uh, uh, Pennsylvania. I need a job. Can you give me a job? What can you do? I says, I'll do anything. Okay, he said, when can you start? Now, get the shovel and go with the other men to work on construction. Okay, I start working $2 an hour compared to 75 cents an hour. I got my first check was over $200. I said, this is America. This is America that I dreamed about. All of these immigrants left their families and their homeland. They dealt with many challenges making the move to a new country. But every one of them will tell you it was all worth it because they are now Americans.